Welcome back to Let's Play Neverwinter Nights 2, Mask of the Betrayer. This is Big Los, and this is my second attempt at this video. The first attempt had some technical issues, so there was no way around it. I just had to redo the video all over again. So we were in the Emiscari Forges, and now we're going to go along the left pathway. We had just got some interesting items for the captain. And we picked up this Emiscari Golem, thanks to Sophia. But now we got some Barrow Guardians up here. So let's attack them with long range weapons. And hopefully we'll uh, be able to take them out. Now we do have a room to the right, but we're gonna explore that a little bit later. We're gonna go straight ahead for right now. And we're going to put on search mode, just in case there's any traps up here. So let's search these bodies. We get an Earth Essence. And another Earth Essence. And then we have a Lightning Trap up here. So before we go ahead and recover or disable it, let's examine it to get a better sense of the difficulty class. So examining it revealed that it had a difficulty class of 13, so I think we've got a pretty good chance of recovery. So let's try to recover this trap. And we got it. And we got 100 XP for it. So we're going to make our way up here, and we got a map note added to Emiscori Library. So let's go on up here. And we'll explore this library. More Emiscari ruins. This area must have been uncovered by accident, like the other one we saw earlier. Very astute. Was it the architecture that gave it away? So we got a path to the right and a path straight ahead. So we're going to go into the right first. And we're going to switch to melee weapons because we're in close quarters. And we don't have any enemies in here, but we do have a shelf, and it does give us a scroll of Extract Water Elemental. So, we're going to give that to Sophia, and we'll have her scribe that into her spellbook. Now, Sophia doesn't come equipped with a lot of great spells, but she has the potential to get some good spells. She's not like Sand. Okay, and we... Me. Come on combine some essences to form some better ones. Wait a minute, where did she go? Something's on the other side of the door. Well, yeah, I know that. Doesn't mean you have to go charging in there. Leave that to the captain. Oh, looks like we've got a... Helm the Horror shooting a crossbow bolt at us. No, we don't want you to do Meteor Swarm. Come on. All you have to do is shoot your crossbow. So we'll have the Golem go take out that one, and then the Captain will take out this one straight ahead. And oh, Sophia. And I put you on scale of spell casting. And you're still casting Disintegrate on these guys. Oh, looks like they destroyed that door, those Helm Horrors in that other room. Let's see, where's this guy at? Okay, he's dead. And we'll get back to taking this guy out. And we got enough experience to level up, so we'll do that after the battle. And then we'll rest to regain some of Sophia's spells, because she happened to use all the ones that I'm going to need later. Alright, we've got one enemy left. Let's take him out. There he goes. Alright, let's search the bodies. We get some volatile power essences. I don't 
cast that. Come on. Well now, what do you want? And in this room, besides the body of the construct, we have a bookcase with three scrolls: Mass Death Word, Evasculate, and Power Word Petrify. So we're gonna check those out in a second. Let's grab the rest of these essences. Alright, and we do have another bookcase over here, so let's check this out. We get two scrolls, cacophonic burst, and another evasculate. So we're gonna give one of the evasculates and the power word petrify to Sophia, and the cacophonic burst. Mass Death Ward she can't use, it's Cleric or Druid. However, the Captain has the ability to cast it now with his Use Magic Device ability being augmented by the Nymph Cloak plus 8. And we'll give Sophia yes. the essences we collected. Let's see, can we combine anything right now? Eh. Okay, we got a brilliant power essence out of all those volatile ones. I believe so. So now's a good time to level up the captain. Now the captain's last rogue level was 19. So this being 21, we're going to take a swashbuckler level. Now, we don't qualify for any of these prestige classes, but that's okay. We weren't planning on taking them. The only ones we did qualify for were the Divine Champion and the Neverwinter 9. So for the skills, we're going to improve all the ones that were 23 up to 24. And then we're going to bump up the move silently. And open lock. And we'll bump up search. Okay. And now we get a feat. It recommends great dexterity, which adds plus one to our dex. We actually are probably going to do that one. However, we have a choice of other feats, the regular feats that we've had up to this point. Looks like the captain also has the weakening critical, so... Looks like he does strength damage on a critical, but... We also have armor skin, which gives plus one to armor class. Epic prowess, which gives plus one to all attacks. And then we have all these ones that give plus one to all the abilities. So we're going to pick great dexterity... The reason for that being is that once the captain's base dex gets up to 25, you can see it's 26 now, but once it gets up to 25, yes. the base, we will pick the perfect two-weapon fighting feat. That'll allow the captain to have the same number of offhand attacks as his regular attacks, which is pretty important. And we've got a ways to go before some field levels. Well what do you want? So let's... I guess we can rest in here. Why don't we close this door just in case? I know it probably doesn't matter, but that's just... a an artifact from my live gaming days. Where you, in order to ensure maximum safety, you had to close yes. the door. So we got all our spells back. Light. So let's put the Persistent Haste back on, and this time the Golem will have it. And Sophia will cast Premonition herself. And then she'll cast Stone Skin on the Captain, as well as Spider Skin, and then she'll do the same thing for Kaji. And then she'll cast Spider Skin on herself, too. That gives a bunch of pluses to armor class. Natural armor. That leaves her with some pretty powerful spells for the near future. We're probably going to need them. Well, now, what do you want? All right, so we'll go up here, and then we're going to check out that other room that we bypassed. All right, we don't have to worry about traps since we were through here already. And we'll go in here, and this is a puzzle room up here. We got a map note at it, said sealed passage. This tunnel was clear when I passed. 
Now it's sealed itself shut. Strange. They have turned the earth itself against us. Spirits blockaded the tunnel? Yes, I can sense a residue of magic in the earth. A powerful spirit, or many of them, perhaps, reshaped the soil to block our way. Is there another way out? I'm almost certain that this is the only way out. All the other tunnels ran down, not up. And those ruins we saw, they were dead ends. Nothing more. Hmm. Well, how long can the spirits maintain the wall? As long as they want. The earth of this barrow is full of spirits, and they will never tire or fade. Okay, so what do you suggest? The Reshemi have rituals to appease angry spirits. Burning offerings to placate them. The offerings in question are usually things that appeal to animals such as food or the twigs and trinkets coveted by scavengers. Okay. The spirits have been trying to kill me. Why would they accept an offering from me? You're expecting logic from spirits. They're full of whims, impulses, dreams. Throw them a haunch of meat and they'll forget their own names. Okay. Well, we have this rod we picked up in the Emiskari ruins. There are dreams in that rod, or some nightmare, shaped and bound. Its magic is familiar. Like your mother's magic, mistress. Kaji, hush! It's old magic, and unpredictable. It might open the tunnel, it might destroy us. We could try smashing through the barrier. That barrier is alive. The soil itself is full of spirits. It will reform just as fast as we damage it. If we can damage it. Never mind, let's go. Okay, so there are three solutions to this puzzle. And we're going to save here and we're going to do all of them just to showcase them. Now, the first one that you could do is just the straightforward placating the spirits by doing a burnt offering. Just like in the book of Exodus. So there's an offering bowl here. If you click on it, it says the offering bowl is empty. Now if you place the sacred pouch into the bowl and ignite it as a burnt offering, you appease the spirit. As the pungent smoke fills the cave, the barrier sealing the tunnel crumbles away. The passage is now clear. Okay, so that's pretty much the most straightforward method of doing this, and you get 1,000 XP for it. It's probably the least amount of XP that you can get. No, now I know it's the least amount of XP you can get for doing that. And then you can just go forward unimpeded except for these tether wolverines up here. So let's load the game and do another method. Okay, so if you instead of clicking on the offering bowl, you click on the sealed passageway, you can see a bunch of runes on it. It says, a barrier of solid earth and stone stands in your way. It appears newer than the bare walls around it. You feel the Emiskari rod vibrating angrily in your pack, as if it objects to the barrier somehow. So if we do spellcraft to determine how the barrier is created, we don't have any ranks in it. So... We're going to fail. Failure, the barrier emanates magic, but other than that, you're unable to determine anything else about it. But so Sophia has success. Strange. This dirt is fresh, but it's unnaturally firm. There's a mind, an intelligence, molding the earth, holding the barrier together. Whatever it is, it's close, probably in those bones. So if we strike the barrier, small bits of earth and stone chip off but the damage quickly vanishes before your eyes. So we have to leave it alone, and then we got to click on it once more to get the option of using the Emiskari Rod on it. So we're going to strike the barrier with the Emiskari Rod. The barrier crumbles. A moment later, the Emiskari Rod quivers, then shatters. And we get 1,000 XP for that. That's the base XP for solving this puzzle, and then a lich appears. The rod broke. No doubt because you misuse it. Am I correct? Um, I didn't misuse it. It already had a crack in it when I found it. Mr. Skeletor. 
Impossible. The craftsmanship was perfect, and I would never have dared to bind my essence to a flawed creation. And yet, here you are. True. Any damage must have occurred after my binding, undoubtedly sabotaged by one of my rivals. Why would you bind yourself to it? I had only intended to power the rod with a small part of my essence, but my spell worked too well. A small price to achieve perfection. Very arrogant. You ask questions and yet lack the courtesy for proper introductions. I am High Artificer Merrick of Inupris, loyal servant of the Purple Emperor, and you, it seems, are a thief. Explain yourself, thief. How did one such as you come into possession of the rod? How did you defeat the wards of my tower? Well, we're not in Inupris. I found the rod in the ruins below this barrow. Ruins? Barrow? Enough of this nonsense. I must return to my tower and resume my work. Well, you aren't going anywhere. I'm not done with you yet. Oh, but I am done with you. And now this initiates a battle. Yes. So we're gonna have Sophia cast Greater Magic Weapon on the captain. Probably should have done that earlier, well, no. but I guess now what do you want? about a good time as any. And then we'll bring the golem on the other side so we can have flanking. And last time I did this, the captain was having a lot of trouble hitting him, so... Why don't we have Sophia... Cast Disintegrate on this lich. Oh yeah, it did 150 damage to him. But the kill goes to the Emiscari Golem, and we get 283 XP for that. So if you do this path... You get 1,283 XP. Wait a minute. Okay, the captain's dazed, and if you try to click on the remains right next to him, look at his cloak. Are you, like, doing the limbo? Captain! What's wrong with you, man? Nice. Nice bug yes. there. Alright. So we'll have Sophia pick this thing up. We get a volatile power essence, but we also get the Emiskari Battle Mage armor. So let's check this out. The artificers of the Emiskari Empire crafted these suits of armor for their battle mages. Though there is still a small chance the armor could interfere with spellcasting, the extra protection afforded by the armor is usually worth the risk. So we got a base AC of 5, we got a max dex of 4, its light armor gives plus three so. in addition, and it's made of mithril and has a 10% spellcasting failure. And if the captain equips it, it drops his AC by three points, so we know which armor is better. We're going to keep the one that we have now, and we're going to load the game and do this all over again. Now, you don't have to fight the Lich. If you keep going through dialogue options, the Lich will disappear. And then if that happens, you will be able to meet him later outside the sky, and if you know where that is. If you don't, then just ignore what I said. And at that point in the game, you'll be able to recruit him as a non-playing character and he'll help you out through that section of the game. But not all the way to the end. You have no idea where you are, are you? The primitive place stinks of nature magic. A hidden cavern beneath the city, perhaps. The Emperor will have it cleansed once I inform him of its existence. Lore. The Emiskari Empire is long gone. Destroyed centuries ago. You're mistaken. The Empire is eternal. Enough of this nonsense. I must return to my tower and resume my work. How do you know your tower is still standing? Of course it still stands. I built it myself, after all, and he disappears? And you have the potential for meeting him again. Now, I haven't verified this because I always do the last option that I'm going to show because you get way more experience points for it. After all, you want to maximize XP. Bear Skeleton. 
The ancient bear skeleton looks fragile enough to be easily shattered by weapons or spells. The consequences, however, are less certain. So if you attack it, you get four of these barrel guardians appearing. And we're going to destroy them. Since we have the perfect weapon for it, the elemental's ruin. We'll just pull back Sophia and let the captain take care of this. Let's see, we could do lesser missile storm, although... Oh, great. It's not going to cast now because the creature that she cast at died. Can we do it again? Alright, so once they die, a Telthor bear appears. And for each one of those things we killed, we get 403 XP. I have my eye so, multiply by 4, that would be 1612 yeah. XP that we got right now. Yeah. So that's more than the burnt offering and yeah. more than killing the Lich. Yeah. Yeah. And this, since yeah. the bear is a spirit and it's incorporeal, it's immune to critical hits. And then we get another 205 XP, since the bear is destroyed, we get the 1000 XP for solving the puzzle. So altogether that would be 2817 XP for doing that. It's a lot more than the other ways. So that's the way we want to do it. And now we'll advance forward and take care of these Telthor yes. Wolverines. So why don't we use this ring that we got? Let's try Hypothermia, see if that does anything. Okay, so she did like seven points of damage. That's not bad. Probably about as much as her bow would do. Why is that thing not even attacking or moving? See, we can have Kaji do a touch attack on him. with the burning hands. Now, why didn't I get any experience points for killing those things? Well, that sucks. I mean, that really bites. Why didn't I get any XP for that? I believe so. No, it's too bad I can't consume their essences right now, like we will later. And if you don't know what I'm talking about, then you will pretty soon. It'll be similar to what you saw with Nakata earlier in the first episode. So we're going to search for traps. We got a map note added, but we don't really need to look at that. It's just a passage to the upper barrow and here we are and this is quite a large area if you look at the map so we're gonna check out this whole place in the next episode will we be able to get out of here and what happened to the captain find out next time this is big los signing off thanks for watching see you next time and tango un buen dia